Hey everybody, it's Harry from Slapper Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. In case you guys are wondering what's the flurry of activity in my kitchen with all my buddies here, I have Hideki here to tell you what we're going to be doing. What's up folks, I'm Hideki. I have Chris, Lewis, and Ryan over here. The four of us are the Yaki Poppies. Uh, we do pop-ups and a lot of catering events for private events for folks, but we also pop up a lot in Little Tokyo, Los Angeles. Um, and we cook mainly sumiyaki, which is a Japanese style coal uh, cooking over uh, imported coal from Japan. And so uh, we had heard about this new coal from Jealous Devil and we we're excited to try it out today and see how it cooks. So folks, if you want to stick around and check out this episode to learn how to cook yakitori from Real Masters and try out our new Jealous Devil Ornex Bichotan Chaco, please stick around for this episode. Today we are prepping our chicken as usual. We're also going to do a little pork belly wrapped with our uh, shimeji mushrooms on the inside here. So uh, pork, pork wrapped mushrooms is going to be on the menu as well. Uh, we have some steak cuts. We'll do a few ribs as well. Um, and then veggies. So we like to cook zucchini, corn, uh, shishito peppers. Sometimes we'll have kobocha up in there, a Japanese pumpkin. And then we have some eggplant today as well that we're going to cook. All right, instead of daddy added some uh, ribs here I have from a previous YouTube episode. We have a uh, probably another five, six pounds of New York strip and another maybe eight, six pounds of uh, pork butt sliced. So I'm going to see uh, we can do some yakitori magic with uh, Hideki and his crew here. How's it going, guys? My name is Lewis. So right now I'm currently prepping the chicken. Right now I'm just getting rid of the excess fat that we don't really want on there. Once all that's done, I'm going to end up cutting this into about inch to inch and a half cubes, and then we'll get that ready for skewering. Usually from one thigh, I think we can average about like, what was it, like two skewers that we got last time? Two to three skewers. It usually depends on how big the thigh is. This guy's a little bit smaller. <laughs> this is an amazing knife, by the way. Oh, you like it? Okay. It cuts, <laughs> cuts beautifully. Yeah, Amazon. Amazon, <laughs> damn. Yeah, I find carbon knives cut differently than stainless steel. It's yeah, got a different touch to it so and uh, it's a different feel. Where you guys prep before you show up on site? Uh, usually my house. Your house, okay. So yeah. then you, you prep everything, you refrigerate everything, you go on site and cook it, right? Yes. Hey, I'm Chris. And uh, what we're doing is we're wrapping mushrooms in pork. And then we're going to skewer these, throw them on the grill. How many uh, pieces of uh, pork belly per serving per stick? Usually two. When we use enoki mushrooms, we'll usually get like a longer roll, and then we'll uh -huh. put we'll cut that in half and put that on one stick. One stick, okay. Um, for today, I think we're just gonna put one of these, uh, two of these whole ones on there, so okay. it's gonna be a little easier. Primary tools are a short and long uh, skewer, right? Mm -hmm. Metal skewers. Yeah. Seven inch. Seven inch and. And a four inch. Four, four, four and seven. Okay, cool. All right, excellent. Uh, this is a big zucchini, right? Like three times. All right, so yeah. we're gonna do something unusual. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna serve a uh, giant. Oh, well, well, well. Zucchini. Zucchini's no joke. Wow. Wow. So how do you guys all meet? You guys are friends? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, like high school? High school or just? All, three of us do boiling crab and then them through music. Oh, you guys are all boiling crab? Yeah. What? Still working there? there multiple times. Yeah. 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 Ryan and Lewis <laughs> yeah. uh, worked at boiling crab, but we all actually didn't really work at the same time. Okay. So how we started kind of was that um, the three of us know each other through music. Yeah. We just decided one day to start cooking and um, restaurant that served yakitori and oh, uh, enjoyed okay. that food and yeah. um, all right looking good it's a nice so, street style i guess we should, we should scrape the yeah, yeah. spoon here <laughs> <laughs> all right for yeah. folks who are watching that uh channel where the je the guy cooks his food by the stream he uses this kind of a serbian knife so hideki is gonna give it a shot here i just ordered it off amazon because so I, I couldn't right. resist it so see? we're gonna see how it goes so how does he <laughs> cut it's okay it feels it's very easy. smooth. The weight is nice and it helps you like push down okay. through. So it's pretty sharp out of the box, right? Yeah. So so not, not too bad. It's not as nice out of the box and not, not sharp enough. But this looks pretty good. So the main thing I'm doing when I skewer is I want to make sure that these flaps are both facing inside. That way it doesn't like uncurl when you cook it. Um, and then I kind of just go straight through the middle. It's always nice to leave it directly on the board and um, don't like pick it up and try and skewer it, but just put it straight on the board. All right, folks, you want to push the skewer in before you cut off the meat here. Oh, that's a big kebab, man. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Ryan, and uh, I'm skewing the chicken today. So we just want to take the little squares of uh, chicken that we cut the cubes, fold them over into little pillows, and skewer them right down the middle. So you, you skewer them on the cutting board so that they don't kind of like, move around, right? So you use yep. the cutting board yep. as kind of a little backboard to hold it together. 
Okay, excellent. Looks very good. So, folks, this is the uh, Jealous Devil Onyx Pinchotan Charcoal, and uh, we're gonna use it and cook it for the first time. This is a real life Japanese grill from Japan, Yakitori grill. What do you, what do you call one of these things? Uh, Shinchigen. Shinchigen. So, can you tell me a little bit about the Shinchigen here? So, the Shinchigen, I uh, believe this was imported from Japan. Uh, it's made out of clay or porcelain. I forget which one. There's a steel outside, so it holds the heat in very well. We have some of these air ducts on the outside to help with airflow. Um, yeah, we're gonna get this filled up with some coals. Okay. This uh, Bintutan charcoal from Jealous Devil is made out of Kureba Banco, which is a Paraguayan axe wood. And uh, it's large chunks. Uh, it's, it's double decarbonized and uh, it will cook a really high temperature. And we're gonna try to start it up. What, what do you guys like to do to start it up? You put it in a charcoal chimney or you Usually, just wanna fire yeah, it up? We'll use them like in the charcoal chimney and okay. then get those started. And once they're red hot, okay. we'll get them done inside. The okay. Yeah, I have, a, I have a stove there so you can put it on the fire here. Yeah. There. Here we go. So, folks, we're gonna do be a test, and uh, we're gonna let our yakitori crew here, the experts, cook on the new Onyx Binchotan charcoal from Jealous Devil. What is interesting is uh, that the Jealous Devil is able to sell this in America for a price that's a fraction of what you pay. I paid up to two hundred and fifty dollars for the real special chrysanthemum <laughs> Binchotan from Japan for ten pounds. So that is $25 a pound for the chrysanthemum pinchotan charcoal. This one is much more affordable. 10 pounds is basically like $25. So this is a 20 pound bag you can find in the store. Uh, Jealous Devil released this in October of 2021. So ask your local barbecue supply store for the Onyx charcoal. A 20 pound bag will run you about $49.95 and uh, that works out to be about maybe uh, $25 for 10 pounds. So a lot less expensive than what I paid. I paid $250 for that. So yeah. we're going to heat it up. It just takes a while to heat. So I recommend that you heat it in a charcoal chimney because this charcoal is very, very dense. It'll start take a while to get started up. The nice thing is about this is once you finish cooking, right, all you need to do is drop the charcoal into water, extinguish it, and you can reuse the charcoal again and again. You don't have to let the charcoal burn down. Yes. Okay, so here's a boom fire starter as a bonus in the bag here. So these are going to be released very soon, first in America. Jealous Devil has the exclusive license for these uh, boom fire started look like a bomb and it shoots out a six inch flame. So I, I can't wait to try this. This will, uh, what do you call, ignite the inner pyromania in you. Uh, you know, and let, let, let's, let's, let, let's see if we can start one up and see how, how it burns here. So it's made of coconut uh, product. So it's a it's completely natural product here. Oh, so cool. let's see how this thing lights up here. It's supposed to shoot a flame out for about six inches for about 20 minutes, enough to light the Binchutan charcoal. So the Jealous Devil starter bomb is started up. It'll burn for about 20 minutes. All you need to do is put your uh, charcoal chimney over it and it'll light your Binchotan charcoal. So Hideki is going to drop the uh, thing on top like that. So that's kind of how you heat up. It, heat it up. 20 minutes is probably enough in a charcoal chimney to heat up the Binchotan. Don't use a newspaper because that's not going to work. The newspaper will not burn long enough. So if you want to light up your Binchotan charcoal, that's the proper way. Use one of the Jealous Devil bombs. And I believe you can find it. They sell them eight in a pack. This will be released probably in December 2021. So a good guide for you folks watching this video, about one chimney full of bitunchan charcoal burn about 90 minutes. So you can cook a lot of food in 90 minutes. One thing I also do, I don't know if we want to share this, but for my, I start off with sake always, mm -hmm. boil it, and then I burn, burn the alcohol off. First thing we're going to do is pour a little bit of sake on the pan, and we're going to get this to a low boil. And what is sake? Sake is a Japanese rice wine. Two cups of soy sauce, one cup of sake, one cup of mirin, which is like a sweeter cooking sake. Um, less alcohol, and it has nat natural sweetness from the rice in it, which okay. is nice. And then okay. about a cup of sugar, half okay. a cup to a cup of sugar. So two, one, one, one. Mm -hmm. That would be a good way to start. Okay, one cup of soy, one and cup of mirin. Yeah. And then I cut this all usually with about a cup of, uh, or two cups of chicken stock, so I do Chicken stock as well in here. Mm, okay. And the chicken stock is what I make from scratch. So Starting to sizzle yeah. here. Whoa. There we go. Well. <laughs> yeah. So you can see the, the flame here. Yeah, the flames are going. Here. And you don't want them to go too long, otherwise it'll burn the alcohol too. So what I'll look for is if it starts bubbling a little bit, see like that? Yeah. Starting to pick up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's good now. We'll do this a few times, maybe like okay. two or three times. Okay. Oh yeah, that looks uh, a lot better. <laughs> So about half a cup of uh, yeah, about a half a cup of sugar, sugar, and I'm just gonna mix that in there. 
So on my tare, I like to boil down after I put my chicken stock in there. I'll simmer it for maybe a couple hours. A couple hours. Let okay. it concentrate. Just to kind of concentrate. Bit. Okay. So you you want the you want it to coat the back of a spoon? Is that kind of how how you want to? Yeah, it? exactly. Because because yeah. of the way that we do it, you know, since we do a double dip on it, we want to make sure that it coats the chicken and gets that nice flavor wrapped around it. All right, let's do a temp test now. And on the coal itself, it's pretty hot. It's about 900, 900 degrees, and on the grate, it's about 600. The schmaltz, uh, you know, there's a Japanese word for this, and I'm not sure what it is, but uh, this is basically a chicken schmaltz, which is the fat trim from the chicken that we use. Uh, we kind of just cook off the fat and then into a liquid. It's, it's basically like lard. So like um, a basting liquid, but you use chicken instead, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm brushing some of that chicken schmaltz onto this eggplant here just to kind of coat it with some flavor. Yaki poppies, we started, you know, back in 2018. And really for us, it was, we just started doing backyard parties. Uh, uh, Ryan and, and Lewis lived together. And so we would just be at their house doing R&D and just really cooking to like, you know, bring people together and have fun. And we kept on inviting more and more people over and they kept on complimenting the food, you know? And so at some point we thought that maybe this is something that we should start doing a little bit more. You know, we noticed that there was just a lot of um, bad energy in the world. And I think when we all hung out together, we noticed how good we felt and how healing that was for us. Um, and so really trying to, you know, center that as the reason why we cook whenever we do events with people. We always tell them it's like, you know, we want you to imagine that you're just in the backyard with us at our house and we're cooking for you at a backyard party type thing. And um, so, yeah, we'll usually do an assortment of veggies um, and then we'll finish off with meats. Uh, we, we try and do the whole zero waste thing. So all the chicken scraps, we usually make a chicken stock out of that and that either goes into our tare or that'll go into a, a chicken stock rice that we make that's pretty popular as well. Um, so yeah, we've been doing a, a pop-ups like this for a while and uh, we, we really enjoy just trying to like feed people and, and bring people together basically. So we are based in like the Southern California, Los Angeles area. Uh, you know, we'll go anywhere within reason. Uh, our, our setup is pretty mobile, so that's the nice part is that we can kind of pop up anywhere. Um, you know, we've done stuff on the west side of Los Angeles, which is usually about an hour drive. And so pretty much within like a 40, 50 mile radius of like the Los Angeles area, we'll kind of go out to. We're on Instagram, not super active at this moment, but um, we have uh, our Instagram, which is the Yaki Poppies. And then we also have our website that we just built, um, and that is the yakipoppies.com as well. So um, that's where you can learn a little bit more about our story and how we came together, why we cook and then also reach out for any booking information if you want to book us for a private event. We usually kind of dip everything in our tare a little bit just to get a base coat on there and let it cook slowly. And then every now and then what we do is kind of just hit it with the brush on top. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab our chicken that we did earlier and we're just gonna put it in the tare and we're really just gonna let it sit. Yeah, yeah, tops yeah, and, yeah, a minute just to soak it, right? Yeah, just to soak in the flavor. You're not going to marinate it, right? Just yeah. Right. Because so we do this process twice, twice. so it coats okay. on double. Okay. Okay. Right, so yeah. get the chicken in there. Just get it in there really Tare. sick. So yeah. you're just take, taking it out like that, let it drain a little bit. And you season at the end, a little bit of salt. What we do at the end of every single um, time that we cook is that we take this tare, we put it in our pot on the stove, and we'll boil it down so all the bacteria and all the blood gets cooked out of there. Um, and that's how we maintain our tare, and that's why we've been using it for a year. Shishito is a Japanese pepper. Um, these peppers are generally pretty mild, but these peppers have a very high chance of having an extra spicy one. So you'll eat a whole bunch of mild ones, and then that, you'll, you'll get one that just kicks you in the butt a little bit. Now that we got these pretty cooked evenly on each side, we'll give these a second dip. All right, folks, so here's the eggplant. It's super piping hot, absolutely it's kind of molten and charred. So let me give it a taste of Wow, really the char and then the flavor of the soy. So really a great way to cook food is on this kind of a setup like yakitori. Absolutely delicious eggplant, super buttery, soft. Hope I don't get a super spicy one. It's got the uh, little fish flakes here. I'm gonna eat with the fish flakes like that. Wow, good, really crunchy. That uh, bonito flake right on top. Little heat, little salt. 
Little fish is really good. I try a bit of the shiitake, little shiitake mushroom, nice char, beautifully cooked. It tastes nice here. Mmm, really good. Tastes very meaty. It's like a piece of steak. Nice tender bite to it also. Just a lot of wonderful flavor. Us as the Yaki Poppies, we all come from different cultures, so we like to uh, experiment with our food a little bit. So at some of our pop-up events, we like to do kind of, a, we call it a poppy style elote. Um, so I'm gonna show you how that's done. We take one of our uh, Javi style barbecue corns, skewer it right down the middle. Yuzu and kosho. So a uh, yuzu is a kind of a Japanese uh, pepper, right? A Japanese uh, lime. Mm -hmm. Japanese. Okay, smother it on. Smother it on. Smother it on like that. Take some Parmesan cheese. Sprinkle on some uh, shichimi. Shichimi is a blend of like seven, seven different spices uh, that uh, Japanese people use together. And a little bit of... Uh, and then we add some furikake. Furikake. Furikake is a seaweed with sesame seeds. Give it a lote. Mmm, wow, it's very really good. The char flavor of the corn, the little bit of the uh, yuzu, citrus and then the parmesan cheese all that uh, furukake which is the uh, seaweed all brings it home it's a fantastic flavor you never tried a yaki papi elote corn you guys gotta try it go, go check it out <laughs> last this is the famous yakitori from the yaki papis give it a bite here looks absolutely superb okay chicken is perfectly cooked great flavor the uh, curry really complemented really well. This kind of a hint of a kind of a soy, slight sweetness to it. And then the onions on top really top up the flavor, really create a really complex combination of the chicken with the smoke, the fire, the tare, and a little bit of garnish. So really, really good yakitori chicken. Okay, there you go. Go. There it is. The yaki and taco. Yaki taco with the chicken yakitori skewer. So when you guys do events, this is what you can expect coming up to the yaki poppy folks and uh, for bars, pop-ups, mm -hmm. yep. catering events, weddings, you can do a beautiful chicken yakitori taco with all the special trimmings. Okay. That's gonna be an amazing yeah. bite. <laughs> Super delish. That combination of the shisho pepper, lotus root, that uh, crema on top together with the salsa, absolutely amazing. Gotta go try out the yaki poppy's uh, chicken tacos. This is not brisket, okay, but it's yakitori chicken, so let's give it a shot here. Here we go. Lucky beans. Here we go. Good, good job. All right, beans. Thumbs up. Okay, yeah, good job, beans. We have some New York strip going, generously gifted by Harry Sue. Thank you. We just got some salt pepper on here, and then we also have the mushrooms wrapped in the pork belly. Shimeji mushrooms here, cook it on a grill here, fantastic. Wow, super delicious. It's a big bite, but definitely the hit of the mushrooms with the pork belly and that, that charcoal fire, absolutely amazing. So, you never tried yakitori style pork belly, definitely you gotta give it a shot. So Hideki, have you had the chance to cook uh, quite a lot of food on yeah. the Jealous Devil Ornex Bito Chan Charcoal? What do you think overall? Uh, this is a great burning charcoal. I like that. So like our pork, usually when we cook our pork, we'll get flare-ups in here and there, but the heat is very uh, regulated. It's burning at a great temperature. Uh, our food's coming off at the perfect kind of tenderness. It's cooked very well. I'm really liking this charcoal, especially for like a pure uh, uh, wood coal like this and not like a sawdust compressed coal. For the Vincho Tan style, this is a great, great charcoal for sure. All right, folks, you heard it from a yakitori crew here who cooked this for a living. And uh, Vincho Chan charcoal from Jealous Zell was pretty decent. The only way to find out, don't believe me, don't believe anybody. The only way is to know, the only way to know is to try it. So go find it at your local barbecue store. If not, go to online to jealousdevil.com. Get a bag and go back and cook, cook some yakitori. Follow some of Hideki's crew's techniques on how to skewer them, how to prep them, and how to cook them for you to take yourself to yakitori heaven. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by, checking out my yakitori episode. Go check out jealousdevil.com for their Ornex charcoal. Thanks for stopping by watching this video. I want to do a shout out for my Patreon so you guys want additional content behind the scenes, Zoom classes, coaching, and a lot more. Please go check out patreon.com Harry Sue. Thanks to my Patreons. 
for helping me sponsor my channel so I can provide free content on YouTube. So until the next video, we will see ya. Say bye, Beans. Bye. Thank you.